me introduce Professor Song Han. Uh, Song Han is Assistant Professor in MIT TCS. He received his PhD degree from Stanford University and his research and focuses on efficient deep learning computing. He proposed, for example, deep compression and, and the efficient inference engine for which we all know, know him, but also his well, recent research on hardware aware neural architecture search and TinyML was highlighted by MIT News, Wired, and VentureBeat. And he also received many awards for this. Song was named 35 Innovators Under 35 by MIT Technology Review, and he received an NSF Career Award. So very interesting speaker to open our first TinyML keynote here. Uh, Song, the floor is yours. All right. Thanks for the invitation. I'm very glad to introduce um, the topic of how to put AI on a diet, tiny ML, and efficient deep learning. Uh, so deep learning has been becoming more and more accessible over the years. Uh, when deep learning first becomes applicable, the deep learning models usually require uh, cloud servers with powerful GPUs to run. Those machines are very expensive, usually costing tens of thousands of dollars, and it also requires internet connection to send your local data to the cloud for processing, which also triggers privacy issues when dealing with sensitive data like healthcare data. With the advance of technology these years, uh, many uh, people are able to dramatically reduce the cost of deep learning deployment using many techniques like pruning, quantization, neural architecture research, model deep compression, etc. So nowadays, uh, we are able to run many of the AI algorithms just on your cell phone, which brings the second generation mobile AI. By running AI algorithms locally on your smartphone, we can easily access the benefits of AI without paying extra money and at the same, same time protect our data privacy. So what's the next step for efficient AI? Can we do even smaller? Can we make even make AI even more accessible? We believe that the future belongs to tiny AI. There are billions of IoT devices around the world based on microcontrollers. These are much cheaper, much smaller, and much more power efficient, and they are everywhere in our lives. If we can enable AI algorithms on those IoT devices, we can greatly democratize AI and extend the applications of deep learning. So the era of AIoT on microcontrollers has, has the potential for many applications, such as smart retail, personalized healthcare, smart home, smart manufacturing, precision agriculture, autonomous driving, a vast range of applications on the IoT devices. However, there is a big challenge. There is no free lunch. If we compare the resource, both respect to memory and also the storage, there is a huge gap between the cloud AI, mobile AI, compared with tiny AI. So tiny model design is fundamentally different from mobile model design and also the uh, cloud AI model design. Because uh, microcontrollers, first of all, the resource is four orders of magnitude smaller both with respect to the memory um, and also with re respect to the storage. Memory matters for the activation and storage matters for the weights. Uh, there is no DRAM on microcontrollers, no operating system, and of course, no virtual memory. So we cannot directly scale down existing mobile models because it's non-proportional with respect to activation and parameters. Therefore, we need to rethink how to design tiny AI models. Today's AI's model is too big, and existing mobile networks reduces the model size, but not the activation. And we realize that is the bottleneck for tiny AI. For example, going from ResNet to MobileNet, we uh, did a fair comparison with both 70% ImageNet top-line accuracy, the ResN18, um, shrinked the model model size by 4.6 times when going to mobile nav v2 0.75 version. We choose the, these two networks because they have the same image net top line accuracy. So the parameters reduced by 4.6 times. However, the activation size from mobile net to ResNet is even bigger. 
it's 1.8 times bigger with respect to the activation size because of the inverted bottleneck and the large expansion ratio. This is not an issue on mobile phones because mobile phone has gigabytes, four gigabyte, two gigabyte of mobile uh, mobile phone uh, memory. But for a tiny microcontroller, our budget is just hundreds of kilobytes. So we need to rethink how to design tiny models rather than directly uh, porting mobile net or just shrinking mobile net in, in this example, shrinking it by 75% because the weight and activations is not proportional. So our design uh, reduced both the model size and activation size by proposing a new architecture called MCU net that reduced the uh, weight by six times and the activation by more than three times. And they're proportional so that we can bring um, AI to for, uh, bring microcontrollers to work on not only those simple applications, but also full scale thousand class image net classification on a commercial STM32 microcontroller. And the technique behind, behind MCO net, uh, which was published in Europe's 20 as a spotlight presentation, um, is two parts. The tiny NAS stand for tiny neural architecture search plus tiny engine, which is tiny inference engine co-design. So uh, we co-designed the efficient neural architecture with AutoML and the efficient neural architecture search together with the tiny engine um, which is an efficient compiler and runtime. On the tiny NAS part, we redesigned the design space. And then we performed the neural architecture search on the design space specifically optimized for microcontrollers. We also used the once for all network to train only once and then be able to deploy on diverse range of microcontrollers. Like M4, M7, we just need to train one model and then deploy it on all platforms without retraining. On the tiny engine part, we co-designed the engine with the network with full specialization, and we performed assembly level optimizations. Therefore, we can dramatically improve the accuracy uh, running full scale thousand class image net classification and compared with the uh, conventional uh, TF, uh, TF Lite Micro plus Mobile V2, the uh, current popular models, which we scaled to fit a micro uh, STM32 microcontroller. Uh, our model outperformed from uh, the model from 54% uh, of an accuracy to more than 70% uh, image net accuracy. So oh, this is only given only hundreds of kilobytes of SRAM, but we are able to uh, fully match the accuracy almost with the mobile net. And this was covered by MIT News. And we believe this is very promising that we not only have to constrain ourselves, uh, given the limited hardware resource on microcontrollers for those small data sets, toy examples, and small uh, tasks, but really to move greatly open up the possibility of doing large scale um, computer vision uh, given such a tiny resource. And we believe the era, era of AIoT has arrived. So let's, let's dive deeper into the tiny NAS and tiny engine, how we improved the accuracy step by step. And we use this popular STM32 F746 microcontroller that has only 320 kilobytes of SRAM and one megabyte of flash. So the baseline model, uh, we scaled mobile version two uh, scaled it down to fit this tiny microcontroller, which require width multiplier of 30% input resolution of 80. Otherwise, we cannot fit the tight memory budget. The accuracy on ImageNet is 40%, which is pretty uh, unsatisfying. So by switching this uh, ARM CMC with our tiny engine, which is more e can more efficiently utilize the available memory, uh, we in increased the accuracy to 44%. And secondly, by replacing the mobile net version 2 with our tiny NAS designed model, we further boosted the accuracy to 56% of an accuracy. 
and by performing both system level and model level optimizations with such co-design, tiny NAS and tiny engine can boost the accuracy to 62%. And this is only with the um, STM32F746 and, and microcontroller. And given a memory of 512 as, uh, kilobytes of SRAM, we can further boost it to more than 70% turbine accuracy. So this shows the tiny NAS plus tiny engine co-design is the key for improving the accuracy of full ImageNet classification on microcontrollers. So therefore, we do not need to constrain ourselves on uh, sci-fi and all those small data sets, but really a new breakthrough that open, opened up more imagination on large scale uh, image classification on microcontrollers. So this is the memory saving compared with uh, TensorFlow Lite Micro, uh, Micro TVM, CMC. Uh, the memory saving ranges from more than uh, around three times all the way up to 4.8 times smaller peak memory consumption compared with uh, the popular um, microcontroller deep learning frameworks. Measure on the same STM32 microcontroller, this is comparing the speed. Uh, so compared with TensorFlow Micro, uh, we are up to three times faster with respect to the inference speed. Then another question is, so far we can deal with uh, the inference on a single microcontroller really well. Okay. However, there is a wide spectrum of microcontrollers, big, small, expensive, cheaper, uh, high performance, low power, right? It's a broad spectrum with multiple vendors, different application scenarios, uh, different resources. For example, uh, uh, with STM32 microcontroller, there is Cortex M7, Cortex M4, and maybe even M0. Um, and the SRAM ranges from uh, 512 kilobytes, 320 kilobytes to 56 kilobytes. And the flash ranges from two megabytes, one megabyte, uh, et cetera. So do we need to design a new model to fit each microcontroller? That would be super engineering expensive. And how do we save the human efforts? Can we have just one model and then we can specialize it without any retraining to, to design specialized models for different resource constraints? Therefore, we have a technique called the once for all network. So we can train only once using this technique and get many sub networks for free without any retraining so that we can grab a larger sub network as you see on the left hand side to fit a larger microcontroller like a STM32 H743. And can, we can grab a mid size uh, network to fit a middle mid end microcontroller like STM32 F746. And we can grab a smaller, a tiny uh, version of the once for all network to fit a much smaller resource constraint like a Cortex M4 STM32 F412. Okay. And this idea is very similar to the Russian doll, where smaller child networks are nested in larger ones. And with our uh, training recipe, we can prevent such interference between the large models and the smaller models. And such once for all network even enable the smaller network perform better than training from scratch individually. So this is a very efficient training pipeline that save the human efforts and reduce the GPU training cost and greatly improve the productivity for deploying uh, AI models on diverse range of tiny ML devices. And the performance is even better than training the small, tiny model from scratch. And we suspect that is due to the supervision and, and regularization from larger models to smaller models training at the same time. Similarly, even for one microcontroller, there are full battery case, less battery case, or even the battery saving mode. So with the uh, once for all network, we can just give the customer one model 
and it has the capability to uh, to be very uh, flexible and to be fully elastic to fit different battery constraints, full battery and battery saving mode. And the key idea is to decouple training and search. So conventional neural architecture search has a nested loop with many devices, you have to search again. And with each search, search episode, you have to train many iterations, which is very expensive, taking tens of thousands of GPU hours and many cloud computing costs. The once for all network decouples training and, and search so that we need to train only once, get a mother network, get a uh, once for all network, and then at a search time uh, for different devices, different search episode, we can directly sample from once for all network without the need to retrain it. And the key uh, idea is we can directly utilize this network um, after the search. We can directly go to production without needing to retrain it. Therefore, we have very low search cost when adding a new scenario. So this is comparing the uh, CO2 emission for different scenarios like human life, 11,000 pounds, uh, US car, 126,000 pounds, and NAS net is 400,000 pounds. But once for all network, when adding a new scenario, it takes only 340 pounds of CO2 emission. Environmental friendly and also low design cost. So therefore, using this once for all network, we can easily specialize different models for different microcontrollers, okay? Um, so here, the, uh, it's labeled with underscore means the size of the SRAM, uh, and after that is the size of the flash. And we can see ranging from STM32 F412, which is a Cortex-M4 microcontroller, all the way to a more powerful STM32 H743 uh, microcontroller. Um, the accuracies uh, improves uh, from smaller to larger, and we need to train only one model rather than training separately when you have a new device in the production line. And it's very early work to achieve a high accuracy on commercial microcontrollers and a pretty good accuracy compared with the MobileNet V2 plus CMC CNN on the 1000 class uh, full ImageNet classification, and this is the top one accuracy. And on slightly larger devices like mobile phones, uh, once for a network outperformed the efficient net by almost 2.6 times faster and with the same latency is also 3.8% uh, higher accuracy. So it means uh, this network is very vers uh, versatile, not only for tiny AI, but also for mobile AI, for different spectrum, it outperform the existing solution with this novel uh, training mechanism. So this is a top one accuracy on ImageNet. So the best model we get is um, more than 80% top one accuracy with less than uh, 600 median max. Uh, this is another example comparing or compared with MobileNet version 3. We need to train only once and get the entire trade-off curve. So users, if you need a larger model, you can pick, you can slide to the right-hand side to get a higher performance. And if you need a smaller model, you can slide to the left-hand side to get a faster model. And we need to train only once. This is like different versions of the Russian doll uh, nested one in another. Um, this is the trade-off of accuracy and computation. So um, we can see that these auto ML design models is in the circle, all perform those human design models. And our model is achieving a 595 median max with 80% top on accuracy on the top left corner. Um, and this technique has uh, received a couple of awards including the fifth low power computer vision challenge and also the fourth and third low power computer vision challenge on the uh, Google uh, Pixel 1 CPUs, Zilinx FPGAs, and also Qualcomm DSPs. Uh, also on the bottom, uh, first place in the Visual Week Words challenge in CVPR 19, uh, Semantic Kitty, which is a LiDAR perception uh, tasks for autonomous driving, 
uh, 3D semantic segmentation, and also micronet challenging your RIPS 19 in the NLP track for an uh, efficient language model. And all these are backed by uh, the same technique. Um, so far, we talk about uh, efficient neural, ne neural network and the inference engine. So we dive one step deeper to also search the accelerator architecture. So in this year's stack, we have a new paper called Neural Accelerator Architecture Search. So we jointly search the hardware architecture with the neural, neural architecture. And different com from conventional um, hyperparameter tuning only method, we can also search those non-parameter, non-parameterized um, structure values and also scheduling uh, policies. So on the right-hand side, we can find with a conventional model plus the neural accelerator architecture search, we can improve the trade-off of the energy delay production and the accuracy step-by-step -step toward the left uh, top left corner. So let me give a pause before I jump into the applications are there any questions so far about the technology? And then I'm going to dive so, into it. Yes, so we have time for a few questions. So if people want to or have questions, please um, add them on the chat and uh, you can vote on each other's question. Um, so let me already ask you a question. You talked a lot about tiny engine, which I think is a very, very interesting um, uh, concept and, 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 and results. I was wondering how much is this for an MCU or is this also customizable to other backends? Like some of your work seems to involve FPGAs and so on. Can you customize the tiny engine compiler to other backends, the custom backends of AI accelerators? Oh, that's a good question. So the tiny NAS can be customized to other platforms. So for example, this is for Samsung phones, Google phones, LG phones, NVIDIA GPUs, Intel CPUs, and Xilinx FPGAs. So the our NAS part can target uh, different backends and different hardware platforms outperforming these existing baselines. But the tiny engine is specifically for targeting tiny microcontrollers. Okay, good, In uh, interesting. And then you always mention, of course, the memory size varies. You're going to use a different uh, network, but I guess if your tiny NAS is, is optimized or can customize to different backends, it's not only the memory size that might matter, but also the structure of the data path and, and the amount of MACs you have available and, and their spatial rulings. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Um, the key differentiation we, is that we have a, a design the design space approach where uh, um, existing work assuming a fixed design space, but we have different design spaces for uh, cloud AI, mobile AI, and tiny AI. So we first uh, design this design space and then uh, do NAS on the optimized design space for a target hardware platform. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, let's uh, resume the talk. And then in the meantime, people feel free to keep uh, questions if you have some. Okay, good. So let's see some demos. Um, so this is a visual weak word demo. Uh, we we deployed this model on the STM32 F746 microcontroller, only 320 kilobytes of SRAM, one megabyte of flash, uh, our Cortex M7 to uh, to six, um, 216 megahertz, it achieves a 75 per, uh, compared with the uh, MobileNet Mobile Plus TensorFlow Lite Micro, uh, we improved the accuracy from 75% to 87%, uh, improving the frame rate from uh, 2.9 frames per second to 7.3 frames per second. So if there's person is red, if the person leaves, it is it is green. Uh, very responsive. So not only such uh, classification task, but also detection task. For example, we can do uh, face and mask detection, uh, especially during COVID, I think it will be helpful. Uh, so now you can see it's detecting the faces with a mask. Uh, it will be in green and they support multi-person detection. And the faces without mask will be have a bounding box of red. So this is deployed on the same microcontroller, um, object detection, person uh, face detection. 
uh, and also we can do person detection, which I think is helpful for smart home cameras uh, by finding those bonding boxes. And also a more challenging uh, like smart retail scenario object detection for uh, the shopping cart, um, on, on, uh, the, uh, the very tiny items on the cart. And the model is only six, uh, 36 kilobytes compared with the mobile net 3.5 megabyte, 100 times smaller. And also we have some qualitative uh, results. So compared with the MobileNet V2 proxy NAS and our uh, CVPR uh, winning solution, we improved a lot uh, with MCU net. So it's 2.4 times faster compared with our previous winning solution and up to 3.4 times faster compared with uh, the proxy NAS with respect to the measured latency on the left. And the peak SRAM is um, up to 3.7 times smaller than the, mo uh, than the mobile NAV tool. And another important task is audio uh, wake words, the speech command data set. And we can achieve up to 2.8 times faster compared with the mobile NAV tool or 2% higher accuracy um, with respect to the accuracy and latency trade off. And on the right hand side, the peak SRAM is up to four times smaller compared with uh, the mobile v 2 method using MCU net. So these are uh, some of the uh, demos and quantitative results. We also have tiny ML for other more complicated tasks like for point cloud. So we accelerated uh, point cloud recognition from 3.4 uh, frames per second by three times to almost uh, 9.1 frames per second with SPV NAS, which ranks first on the semantic kitty leaderboard. And this is very helpful for uh, AR, VR, and autonomous driving tasks. And we have uh, evaluated our model called the FAST LiDAR Net, uh, which is uh, published at EPRA 21. We in accelerated that from five frames per second to 47 frames per second, almost 10 times. And we deployed it on a full size vehicle for a real world autonomous driving scenario by only using LIDARs. And we also have worked on tiny ML for GANs. Um, due to the limitation of the remote presentation, the frame rate might not be good. But here, uh, the frames per second used to be 12 frames per second. After our acceleration, it becomes 40 frames per second, three times speed up on the NVIDIA JSON um, uh, GPU. Uh, we also worked on uh, TinyML GAN for real-time photo editing. So we reduced compu computation to 50%, 30%, uh, even 20%, and you can barely see the difference of the quality. So we can preserve the quality by turning a large network to be a smaller network for uh, image synthesis and editing. And this is a demo we have running the uh, any cost again, low cost and also high cost and high quality, uh, both uh, in one network using the idea of the once for all network. So we can easily adjust the mustache and finalize. And everything is running locally on a MacBook, 2019 MacBook. We can make, it, make him smile, decrease the mustache, and it's very responsive, providing interactive, low latency uh, photo editing experience for users. We can also make him look younger. And then finally click finalize button to render a high quality uh, edited image. We also worked on tiny ML for NLP, where efficient NLP on mobile devices can enable real-time conversation between uh, different languages, like speech machine translation um, tasks. Um, so uh, the neural architecture search used to be very expensive, like the Evolve Transformer, and our search cost is very low on the left-hand side. And the search the model uh, using the method called hardware aware uh, transformer HAT um, can speed up the inference latency on Raspberry Pi by uh, almost three times, and also the model is 3.7 times smaller. And um, 
HAT is also orthogonal to general model compression techniques. Com combining HAT with Perunian quantization, we can reduce the model size uh, from uh, more than 700 megabytes to only uh, 28 megabytes without hurting the uh, glue score of the translation quality. So 25 times compression. We also build a hardware accelerator for efficient NLP tasks. And the key idea is uh, the atten attention uh, mechanism has a lot of redundancy, and the languages itself has a lot of redundancy. Uh, we performed cascade token and head pruning, as well as uh, progressive quantization. And this is fundamentally from uh, weight pruning, because the attention layer doesn't have any weights. Uh, but the token has redundancy. In the example below, as a visual trait, the film is almost perfect. In order to classify the sentiment, we gradually remove unnecessary tokens. In the first round, it becomes as treat film perfect. In the second round of pruning, it becomes film perfect. And we can easily tell this is positive sentiment by only uh, computing on two tokens rather than 11 tokens. So, so that's a lot of saving. Only 12% of the token is left. So with this idea, we built a hardware accelerator for that. Uh, we achieved a 20, more than 20x speed up with a specialized ASIC data path, another 3.4x speed up with cascaded token and head pruning, like the example on the left. And finally, another 2.8 times speed up with progressive quantization. So we progressively fetch the MLSB and LSBs. All right, so beyond that, we also worked on tiny ML for video recognition. We can uh, predict what is the action, what is the human doing uh, for activity recognition, which I think is very helpful for uh, monitoring and smart home applications. Like here, we can predict it's pushing, some, cover something with something. And also um, other uh, like gestures like moving something, rolling something. And we can also predict the gestures. Take something, hitting something with something, et cetera. Very fine-grained classification. And on the right-hand side, we can even um, tell why the neural network gives such prediction. For example, channel five is recognizing moving something away. So you can see there is a cup and the frame number three, four, five corresponds to the regions and time frame where it's moving something away. Similar on the second second example, wiping, um, like frame number two, number three, etc., are showing the uh, scenario, the time, temporal, and spatial uh, information where the people is wiping. So our technique accelerated such video recognition by nine times. So from 164 milliseconds per video to 17 milliseconds per video, and improved the throughput uh, from six videos per second to 77 videos per second uh, with, with even better accuracy. Uh, the video quality might not be good on WebEx, but feel free to check out uh, the, uh, the original video on our YouTube. So finally, I, I want to briefly introduce our latest uh, New Reef's publication on tiny transfer learning. So far, we talk about uh, inference, but we also we want to enable on-device learning. So we don't need to transmit our important data to the cloud for fine tune, but also be able to fine tune the models locally on edge devices. Again, the key bottleneck is the uh, activation size and also the batch size, which uh, increases the memory consumption. Uh, with our technique, we can reduce the training memory from 200 megabytes to only 16 megabytes so that it can enable better customization. Uh, no longer, uh, it can adapt, continually adapt to new data clouded, collected on the sensors and also security where data leakage is prevented since data doesn't need to leave the device um, uh, because of security and regularization, it becomes safer. So that's tiny transfer learning. And last but not the least, uh, we also have data efficient GANs, where 
uh, these AI models used to require not only huge amount of computation, but also huge amount of data. For example, uh, generating a face generation with a style GAN tool used to require 70,000 images with a data set called FFAGQ. With only 100 images, conventional technique, the quality of image generation is very poor. Uh, with our technique, with only 100 images, we can generate high quality images with only small amount of data. And this immediately attracted um, the defect detection uh, industries where the defect examples are very rare. Uh, if we can use very few, few images to generate a lot of photorealistic faulty um, defective images, that will be very helpful. So I believe this data efficient technique will also help for the tiny ML uh, community. So in summary, uh, we talk about tiny ML and efficient deep learning uh, from cloud AI, the ResNet age, to mobile AI, the mobile net age, to tiny AI, the MCO net age. Uh, we believe there is a huge potential to make AI more accessible and democratize AI to more applications. And given the promising result on large scale image net, we believe we not only have to constrain ourselves to those toy small scale data sets and tasks, but also large scale tasks like full image net classification or complicated object detection. Uh, we have shown the VWW model running on the microcontroller, face and mask detection uh, demo on the microcontroller, and also the person detection on the uh, type a small microcontroller. If you're interested in licensing those models, welcome to contact me. We also talk about efficient on-device learning techniques, tiny TL, and data efficiency techniques, the differentiable augmenta augmentation. So with that, I'd like to thank uh, all of our sponsors. Thanks so much for your generous uh, sponsorship, as well as providing us real-world applications to solve. And we have uh, a lot of uh, videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, welcome to subscribe. And thank you for your uh, attention. I'm glad to take questions. OK, thank you for the very interesting talk. Um, I have some questions here also from the audience. Um, one one quick question is someone asks whether there is some preprint available somewhere above from your DAC paper. Is this something that people can already look at or they have to wait uh, till it becomes online? Yeah, it will be uh, pretty close in a couple of weeks. We believe we will release that in April and put it on archive. Okay. Okay, then some more technical questions. So there's a question, what makes the tiny engine inference or the tiny inference engine more efficient than TF Light Micro? Um, so so what, what are the distinguishing features and, and why do you gain so much versus that? Uh, so here are the two features of the tiny engine. Um, it is fully specialized and also we removed the redundancy of the compilation part. So everything is compiled. Uh, uh, is offloaded to the lot of tasks are all offloaded to the compile time, and also we performed uh, many assembly assembly level optimizations uh, to fully okay. and, and parallelism uh, uh, hierarchy. Mm. Okay, and and a follow up question from the the same uh, attendee is: Can the tiny engine exploit some of the special neural network acceleration operations that we have on some of the recent? Um, embedded MCUs or, or like AI optimized MCUs? Yeah, there need to be some change, but uh, I believe if there are new primitives, we can definitely uh, expand this framework to uh, new acceleration primitives. For example, recently we are working with Maxim uh, to cater for their uh, new uh, Maxim accelerator, uh, ASIC accelerator. Okay, okay. Uh, then a question on the once for all. Um, the question is, does it use low precision um, network, I guess, weights and activations to improve latency or is the precision kept unchanged? Um, so we can do both. So that is orthogonal. Uh, so activation, uh, the quantization precision is also a parameter. For example, here we are using int4 for all these, uh, for all these numbers. 
but also we can do in, in aid. So it's also part of the once for all network where you can grab a smaller precision or a larger precision from the same once for all network. Okay. And we have that called APQ from, from we did it two years ago that combined the whole pipeline, A for architecture, P for pruning, Q for quantization. So we put all three in the same design space um, and we find it's, it's better than uh, sequential uh, architecture search, pruning and quantization. So uh, and we published that in CVPR last year. Feel free to- Okay, okay. good. Um, uh, also a linked question to this is, you showed some of this once for all towards FPGA, so how, how can people use it if they would like to be deployed on a Xilinx FPGA, for example? Is yeah, um, yeah, it is definitely possible. So, for example, here on the uh, ZU3 EP FPGA, uh, we reduce the latency by using uh, from 69, uh, sorry, from 6.2 milliseconds to about 4 milliseconds. So, 50% reduction without changing the silicon. So, it's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, even for accelerators. Um, yeah, but I guess the question from the audience is, can they deploy this? Do you have like a, a flow to deploy the ones for all on Xilinx or people would have to do their own customized implementation of this? I don't have to do own implementations, so we didn't change the RTL. So this is purely the efficient model design um, okay. that you can use your existing um, signings DNDK. Now I think it's called uh, Vitus AI. Okay, okay, very interesting. And then as a last question. Um, oh. Okay, let me go to the last question. Um, the comparison of FPS and accuracy between TensorFlow Light and the tiny NAS MCU framework on the STM mixes impact of NAS and MCU mapping. So, um, can you basically pull both of them apart from each other? And how is the tiny MCU framework then exactly different from TensorFlow Lite purely from a backend perspective? Uh, so the, for the backend perspective, the key difference is compilation. We offloaded a lot of the workload to the compile time. So at the runtime, there's a lot of saving. And secondly, yeah. we fully utilized the available memory resource and the available CMD units um, for better scheduling to reduce the uh, overhead of memory mo data movement. So assembly okay. level optimizations. Okay, that's very clear. Let us end um, this talk here. Uh, I want to thank our speaker again. Song, thank you for the very interesting talk. I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors first. It's ARM uh, that develops software and hardware for TinyML. Qualcomm, Samsung, these three are the executive, executive sponsors. And, and then followed by Platinum sponsors, PTA Compute, Lattice semiconductors. And the gold sponsors are Brain Chip Corporation, Cisco, DSP Group, H Impulse. Emza Visual Sense, Gerald Matter Labs, uh, Green Waves Technologies, Hymex, ImagiMob, Legend AI. Maxim Integrated, Pixel, 
reality AI. SenseML. Silicon Labs. Sintiant. and Google TensorFlow. Xmos and the civil sponsors are H-Cortex, Hoots, and uh, Syncense. Again, we are very grateful for their continued support, and this is a great testimony that uh, the foundation and this community is, re is really of, of huge interest for for the companies and 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 for the whole uh, for the whole world.